Hey guys, the Wood Craftsman here, and uh, I've got the auto drain finally up and running on this uh, new compressor, and uh, did a couple of things differently. Um, probably the biggest change I made was instead of mounting the auto drain directly on the uh, 12 inch nipple from the bottom of the tank, um, I still included a ball valve there, but I've got a push to connect uh, tubing to pipe thread connector. And that's a quarter inch outside diameter, eighth inch inside diameter. Um, it's a polyethylene tubing. It is good for, I think, uh, 250 pounds, I believe. And uh, what I did was um, I mounted the auto drain separately on the wall. Just for a simple reason, we need to service it. It's a little easier to get at. Uh, these are pretty much maintenance free for the most part. You might have to uh, bleed out the, the uh, um, strainer once in a while. But uh, yeah, so this line here goes down to the bottom of the tank. And then this line here is I did actually mount the uh, oil water separator again into the auto drain. And um, it seems to be working well. So. Um, Show here a little bit of detail. So on the very bottom there we've just got a coupler and then there's a one-way check valve which only let the uh, um, air and water drain to the hose so I won't push it back up uh, into the filter and then from there it goes up and into the auto drain. So um, I ran this idea past Rotary Comtech a couple years ago on my old Quincy and in theory it's supposed to work so um, I haven't noticed any water in the airline since I've done this uh, on the last time as well, so um, it seems to be working well. The key to it is to make sure that they're both at equal pressure. So being that the tank is at 100 and uh, I think it's like 160, uh, this water separator is also at 160 because it's before the regulator. So, and then the bleed off just goes to this uh, small copper tube. And I kind of crimped the end a little bit so it's not as noisy. So. But yeah, so that's the uh, auto drain, and uh, the difference with this one, if you haven't seen on my Quincy that I had before, this auto drain, I'm not sure why I have this on here, but this auto drain is um, 220 volts, and what I've done with this is um, I've wired it into the load side of the uh, contactor. so. Uh, what that means is the auto drain can only cycle while the compressor is running. Unlike a typical auto drain that you plug into 110 volts, they cycle um, throughout the day uh, for as long as you have it plugged in. So this one here will only cycle uh, when the compressor is running. And there's a couple dials here to set the interval and the frequency. And uh, I've got it set to the minimum on both, so it purges for about a half a second every about every 30 seconds or so, not quite. Uh, the compressor takes about a little, just a shy over a minute, um, or just, just a little over a minute, about a minute and three or four seconds to recharge, and uh, this will cycle um, three times. Once when I start it, once during, and then once towards the end before it kicks out. So. Uh, might be a little bit excessive, but um, I could probably go to a longer purge and then maybe set it for, uh, you know, like anything over a minute. You know, the compressor is running longer than a minute. It can purge more, but this seems to work well. So, but it's fully adjustable. So, 
Um, this auto drain is um, a little bit different than a lot of the ones you find on eBay. Um, here's kind of the difference right here. Um, this is the port on the side. This one doesn't really have a, uh, a built-in strainer. Um, okay, now well, this isn't the best here. Um, but there's a little uh, solenoid here and there's a little plunger that moves up and down there and obviously once it energizes it this turns into a magnet pulls the plunger up and it purges air out and um, so the plunger is never actually directly in the airline it's above the airline I guess if that makes any sense to you um, versus a lot of the other ones it's just kind of like a solenoid valve a true solenoid valve where it just uh, opens and closes with a with a passing through this one here actually kind of sits on top so on the end here there is a clean out valve but there's really no strainer in here so um, it's kind of a unique design this one's made by uh, Suburban I think called Suburban Technologies it's called a Tsunami so but yeah it's it's been working well uh, the only thing I did find out the hard way was is a couple years ago when I put this on my Quincy uh, when I first installed it I ended up taking the solenoid off and then I'm not sure you're going to see this uh, well okay I right, the solenoid valve this this stem once you take this nut off and take the solenoid off or the coil off the stem will actually screw out of the brass inside that stem is a little plunger there's an o-ring and then there's a tiny little spring well I lost that spring long story short and the idea of that spring is to be able to make this um, two things number one it'll, it'll actually make this drain work in any direction number two um, it'll help it seat at low pressures so um, I lost the spring so anyways when I first had this motor I just used this uh, conduit fitting here this clamp and screwed it to the wall and so the drain was tipped at a pretty good angle and it wouldn't seat so I ended up making this wooden bracket for it to sit on which actually looks a little bit cleaner anyways so but yeah um, the compressor should run here so I'll actually show you the um, the auto drain in action here and uh, it's uh, Definitely worth the hundred dollars I spent on it a couple years ago. So on the fact that I'm on it remotely, um, I think it's just going to make it even that much more easier if I need to service it. So, all right, start her up. So there we have it, uh, as you saw it purged three times, once at the uh, beginning and uh, once in the middle and once towards the end. So, And uh, obviously when I use my air center, the compressor run longer, it'll still catch up, um, much like the Quincy did, um, but it's just important, I feel it's important to uh, make sure to keep purging that uh, air to make sure you get any condensation out. Because trust me, I'm, I'm done buying compressors hopefully. so. Not to say I won't have to buy another one sometime down the road, hopefully 20 years or so, but um, I guess I do plan on putting the Quincy back in service hopefully in a couple of years, so have two of them side by side. But that'll be a totally different project someday when that happens, so. 
But yeah, so that's the probably the final update in this compressor. Finally, like I said, got the auto drain up and running on it, and um, it's been good. So uh, the only thing that I kind of wish I would have done, being that I had basically put this compressor together, um, part of me wanted to actually do an after cooler on it um, between the. Uh, the tank and the compressor but you know um, regardless here or there you're still gonna have the way I look at it, you're still gonna have moisture in the line uh, whether you're using a, a belt guard after cooler and then looping this into the the uh, coil and then looping it back in the tank that condensation is still gonna find its way in the tank so um, there's a lot of pros and cons to both of it but the one thing I kind of wished I would have thought about doing was is kind of a poor man's after cooler. I've seen numerous videos on YouTube where they just actually used uh, um, uh, an air conditioning uh, coil from a car, I believe it was like a radiator, and just mounted on the wall and just using convection and you'd be surprised how much moisture you pull a line. Um, the other thing too is uh, I think Sailor Beal is the only one but if you guys haven't noticed this is pretty much a uh, overseas knockoff of a Sailor Beale 705 with the exception of that small after cooler on the output um, but what Sailor Beale has done is rather than everyone else mounting the after cooler um, on the flywheel side here right here they actually mount it um, on the motor side on the outside and then what they have is they have a small fan that's mounted on the pulley on the motor so you're on a 1725 rpm motor with a four blade fan you're getting a significant amount of airflow so you're actually pulling uh, a lot more air through that coil um, I don't know if it if it actually is a lot more effective than the traditional ones where they just use the fan on the flywheel um, as I mentioned in an earlier video this this compressor throws a lot of air off that flywheel so um, yeah, I don't know how much more effective the Sailor Beale after cooler is, but um, they always say it. You can take out, uh, I don't even remember what the numbers are off the top of my head, but it was a significant amount of, uh, of uh, condensation uh, moisture you get out of the, out of the air and uh, the significant uh, temperature drop. Um, if the compressor is running, say, at about 175 degrees, um, the um, air passing through and coming out of the after cooler was supposed to be at like room temperature so but yeah I mean if I, if I do anything I might uh, just make a copper after cooler to mount on the wall here and just do a convection and put a drain on the bottom but um, moisture hasn't really been an issue so um, and I've got multiple filters in my shop as well so it's not really been an issue so um, that and these belts I'll tell you what I know I was kind of in the pinch to buy these belts because I need to get this thing up and running but these Deco belts I got they're worthless um, they just uh, they don't grip and I it's hard to get this motor tight to begin with but I, mean, I got those belts pretty tight they just don't flex as much and uh, when this compressor starts every now and then you'll hear it chirp a little bit um, and I did order some different belts I found some on eBay some gates I think they call it uh, tri-torque or tri-power or something. They're heavy duty and they're a BX versus just a B. Um, unfortunately, the ones from my Quincy wouldn't fit. They're an inch too long. I was actually running out of space um, on the adjustment here. So, uh, yeah, so I ended up ordering some BX-70s and I got them from, ordered them from eBay and I think I paid like $9 a piece. They're brand new old stocks. So. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that, not sure, but the RPM will change just a little bit. It'll be down to about 750, I think. So I was going to get the original motor pulley from the manufacturer, but they wanted an arm and a leg for it. And I had gotten a TB Woods pulley from Zorro Tools off eBay, and I paid, uh, I think, like $57 was all said and done. But now that I got the wrong bushing, uh, it'll take a little bit to get that. But like I guess I'm not sure if I'll do a video on that or not. So. All right, guys, so that's it for the compressor. Um, just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers I've gotten within the last few months. It's just been uh, real phenomenal. Um, a lot of people seem to like the content I'm putting up. So, 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. Questions and positive comments are welcome. Thank you.